Finding Happy, Seven Steps to Relationships That Will Not Steal Your Joy is the new book by me, Nikita Banks, a licensed psychotherapist and life strategist. Leverage the knowledge you'll receive in this book to help you with the process of obtaining absolute clarity through the use of guided self-exploration. This process is necessary to help you master all your relationships in 2019 and beyond. Go on Amazon.com or BlackTherapistPodcast.com and grab your copy of the book guaranteed to help you redesign all your relationships based on two basic principles, health and happiness. Get your copy today. Welcome to the Black Therapist Podcast. The Black Therapist Podcast is a podcast where we discuss the unique issues people of color face when dealing with mental health issues and mental health diagnosis. Now, if you are new to our show, I am your host, author, life strategist, and psychotherapist, Nikita Banks, in private practice in my hometown of Brooklyn, New York. I am available for both psychotherapy and coaching sessions, and you can find more information about that on my website, NikitaBanks.com. You can listen to our podcast everywhere podcasts are found, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, YouTube, SoundCloud, Pippa, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and BlackTherapistPodcast.com. If you are a mental health advocate or a therapist and you want to buy our podcast merchandise, you can do so by visiting our site. And if you want access to our free mental health tips, free online trainings, discounted selective services, and resources, do so by joining our mailing list by texting "get happy" all one word to six six eight six six. If you love the podcast, please like, comment, and share. We love to hear from you, and if you want to send me some feedback, guest suggestions, or simply to say hey, you can contact us at our website, BlackTherapistPodcast.com. Please be mindful that this episode and all of the information that we provide here is just a resource and a tool to help get you started on your mental health journey. If you are feeling any mental health distress or you are having any significant issues, please feel free to reach out to us so that we can find you a mental health provider in your area. Okay, let's go. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Okay, so this will probably be a short show this week only because, I don't know, I kind of, I haven't really been, ooh, feeling all that great i'm sorry i had pain in my neck and i touched it but yeah i've been feeling all that great lately i don't know change of weather it's nighttime outside it's darker earlier during the day you know a little bit of the sads which is is that what it's called i I think believe that sads sad sads and by sads i mean seasonal affective disorder sad that's what it's called. And if you never heard of SAD or seasonal affective disorder, it's something that happens in the fall or the winter where you are tired more often, you may be feeling depressed, a little hopeless, socially withdrawn. And I think it makes sense. You just cold outside. You don't want to go outside. You don't feel like being bothered. You don't want to deal with a bunch of people. The holidays are coming. The the got to deal with family and going home to problematic family relationships and stuff. And it's hard, right? So I, like everybody else, fall victim to sometimes feeling this way. And I don't know. I, I don't know if that is what the problem is, but I am cognizant and conscious of that that may be the problem. So I try to make myself be a little bit more social and uh, um, I try to do a little bit more, but I also just like to withdraw too. Like sometimes I want to cocoon a little bit because it's cold outside. So there's that. You know, when you're the, the, the wintertime blues is kind of setting upon me. Although I love wearing coats, like I like I like wearing coats and I like bundling up, but when it gets to this cold, like it's been over under thirty degrees in New York, when it gets like this, I just really want to cuddle up in bed with like soup and, you know, my weighted blanket and not be bothered by the world, right? So, shout out to everybody that joined us this week for our free. Yes, I said free. We did a free workshop and it was pretty, pretty dope. You know, I hate doing live webinars or workshops or whatever or coaching classes because people register for them and then they don't show up. But, you know, for the people that were on the call and they they came live, they were just like, oh, we love that it was intimate. So there will be a replay eventually. (laughs) um i i want to look at it and i want to make sure that it's good for what i want it to 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 
use it for. Um, but there will definitely be a replay, but it probably won't be for like a week or two. However, if you are interested in taking some of the low cost uh, coaching programs or workshops that we have coming up, I'm going to be doing, I feel like I'm going to do eight of them only because there, there's eight pieces in the coaching program that I want to explore. And so I already scheduled two of them, well, three of them, um, and they're going to be personal program coaching programs that I'm going to do with people. But if you want to get in on some of them that I'm going to do for the next few weeks that are going to be low cost. When I say low cost, I mean like under $50, make sure you join the mailing list because they're pretty, pretty dope. If you're on the mailing list, you'll get more information about what the programs entail. And over the next few weeks, I'll tell you what we're going to be doing on them specifically. If you're a therapist and you are, are starting and you really want to make more money, this is for you. If you are a student and you are, you know, planning your career as somebody who will be in private practice, this is also for you. And if you are somebody in the field and you're not so, so great about technology, but you heard of this show, then this is also for you. And if you're a solopreneur, right, you don't have to be a therapist or like a your mental health advocate in order for you to utilize the the things that I'm going to teach in the course, but I'm going to market it to us, to be honest with you, because I feel like I know what I'm doing with us. So yeah, that, that'll be happening over the next few weeks and we're going to go super duper hard in the new year. But right now I'm just like creating content for that. So there's that. Um, I had a whole show planned out and I guess scheduled and then our schedules did not align. So that will probably be coming in the next few weeks. So I, 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 I almost didn't plan a show for today. I was like, I'm just going to come on and I'm going to chat. But uh, last week's What Would You Do was about T.I. and his admission that he takes his daughter to the gynecologist every birthday to get a hymen check, which is kind of gross. Um... And initially, I really wasn't all that grossed out about the idea of it because, you know, some some things is just kind of like what parents do if he was a single father. It would not be that big of a deal of him taking his child to the gynecologist. You know, clearly he's not going in the room. Nobody's letting him go in the room. But <laughs> clearly, um, you know, if he if he was a single father, that wouldn't be a thing. But it just felt like the way he described the story that he was forcing her. So I had to put myself in... many different uh, people's position in this, you know, and as a parent of a child of the opposite sex, I do know that there are things that I don't do when it comes to him in terms of seeing his, you know, I don't go into the doctor's office with him. I, you know, I understand confidentiality. I understand HIPAA laws and I don't really feel like my child should be pressured to tell me something that he's not ready to tell me. I think you should always have an open line of communication so that you allow and you make you you make the environment safe for your child to always tell you the truth. And so I don't really feel like she felt like she had an option. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, last week all over the internet was ablaze because T.I., said he went on some podcasts and then he told some people that or the the host female host that he takes his daughter to get a gynecology check to make sure that she's still a virgin because he doesn't want her not to be a virgin and if you've watched his show I remember him like you know giggling about his son having a girlfriend or whatever you know I mean like if you if you would allow your sons to violate somebody else's daughter, then you know that at some point somebody's gonna have sex with your daughter. Like it's just natural, natural. Unless she's you know gay or she's she's bi, the chances are the per and even even still, chances are fifty percent of the people that she may have sex with will probably be a guy. So you got to get over that. 
right? Virginity is going to be lost at some times. Guess what? Your mama did it. Your grandmama did it. That's how you got here. So, I mean, I don't know. I just, I, I thought about it from a mother's perspective and I, I personally can't imagine what the conversation was like for that mother when either she was told that this is what he does or how to console your child once your father tells the world about your virginal status and this how he's so controlling that he's uh, I, I I mean I couldn't imagine but for me this is why it's very difficult for and I get a lot of emails about seeing people's children in my private practice and this is why it's really difficult for me to to do that kind of work because my job as a therapist is only to give the child a voice and to allow them to say the things that is uncomfortable for them to say and in this situation his daughter doesn't appear to have a voice the only voice that she had was people commenting about you know how they felt about what her father did and her unfollowing them and her liking the the comments that you know said that her father was whatever he was the negative connotations um in the comments and it was just really sad i think that that parents lack the introspection to to know when we are doing something that we believe that is in our be- child's best interest that is is really violating their space and violating their trust. I get that sometimes with my own son, to be honest with you. Cause sometimes I'll just go in his room and like bother him. But he and I have that, the relationship where he'll be like, stop or get out. <laughs> just, just get out. Leave me alone. Stop. You know, I, you know, I may laugh about it, but I, I eventually leave. I eventually get out. I can't imagine telling my mother to get out my room. I think the most I might have said to my mother so she could get the hint is, okay. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Okay. Like, bye, but not saying bye. Because I couldn't imagine saying bye to my mother. But, you know, I have a different relationship with with my kid. My son and I, we also have an open door policy that even if someone hurts him and that somebody is me, then he should be able to come to me about it. And he should be able to discuss with me at all times what he feels. And he sh- he should have a voice in what's going on. And now he's grown, kind of, right? Because he, I mean, he ain't paying no real bills yet. But um, age-wise, he's a legal adult. And so, you know, I, th- I thought about it. Like, what What do you, what do you do? Like, what do you do when you are having these incidents and these issues and these moral, I'll say disagreements with your, with your children? And then there was this post on Facebook. Ah, I do have something to talk about this week. (laughs) There was a post on Facebook and I wished I could find it. Uh, The gist of it was a mother whose daughter yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. A mother whose daughter was dating a guy who was older than she was. So there was a post put up in one of my social media groups where there was a lady posting. Her daughter was 17. I think the man was 30 something. I was unable to find the post, but she was basically saying, you know, this is my baby and this is the guy. I'm not happy with it. But, you know, I put it in God's hands. There's nothing that I'm able to do. Um, if she's if she's happy with them, I, I'm just going to put it in God's hands. And I, I thought about it. Like, at first, I got it as outraged as everybody else. Because I I feel like sometimes as black parents, we could use the Lord having his way. If it's God's will, as just a way to, like, cripple us and not do anything. But I thought about it. Like, if she's 17... She's finished school. If she runs away, the cops are not going to bust their behinds to go find her because she's 17. And, you know, police are not like busting their ass to go out there and find little black girls. Right. 
And then in most states in the union, 17 is legal age to have sex. So legally, you can't call the cops on this grown man dealing with your baby. And if you're a single mom and there are not fathers around, it's not a lot you can you can do to enforce this stay away from my daughter rule. And even if you chose to have a man, if there's a man around and he went, you know, full, full blown TI on a, a dude <laughs> to make sure that she's, you know, he, he, these people stay apart. You can't stop your daughter from running away and doing whatever she's going to do. So then what do you do? Do you rant, rave, cuss, scream, act like a fool and then alienate your child? Or do you just be like, you know what? I at least want to have the option of being able to communicate with this baby. And I at least want to be here. And and that's what she said, basically said in the post is that I'm going to be here to help her pick up the pieces. God forbid if something happens. I think sometimes as our job, as our, as, as parents, we forget that our jobs is not ownership. We don't own these kids. They're going to go out in the world and they're going to have to make their mistakes and they're going to do whatever they're going to do. And and what you got to hope is that you give them enough input and information that the mistakes that they make are very little. And you pray that society will be kind to them, kind enough to extend white privilege to them in a way or youth privilege to them in a, in a way so that they're able to make the mistakes that they make, but they don't cost them a lifetime worth of worry so yeah like what do you do in those in those moments in those spaces when you have these children and they are growing and they are blossoming and they have to make their own choices and make their own mistakes and we have to sit by and watch like what do you what do you do what do you do how do you unplug from that I, I think the only rational thing for us to do is to kind of give it to God or give it give it to the universe and just sit there and plant the seeds in them and make sure that we give them what they need. My mother taught me, you know, um, what's the saying she would always say, raise a child in the way that you want them to go. And so if you have taught your children respect for themselves and if you've invested in them and given them love and you've you've giving them the proper platform to have their own voice and know what they're like, they like and what they dislike and know how to enforce boundaries, even with you, they will go out in the world and be healthy. But the, the problem with a lot of our parenting is that we don't, we don't want to be subject to the things that we need for our children to learn to navigate society. They're supposed to practice those things in love on us. And so if you have a child that talked back to you, you don't want a child that talks back to you. You just like, yo, I want you to listen to what I'm saying. Well, you also don't want to raise somebody who's going to go out in the street and be a sheep. You also don't want to raise somebody who's going to not feel like they ever have their own voice or that their that their thoughts and their wants and their feelings and their desires and their ideas are only to be shut down. You want to raise them in order to be autonomous and to make decisions for the, themselves. And a lot of the parenting that we do robs them of that opportunity to be that kind of adult. So imagine this young woman who doesn't feel like she has a voice. And I'm speaking about T.I.'s daughter now. Doesn't feel like she has a voice in her relationship. Doesn't feel like she can say, hey, daddy, you know what? I like this boy. He likes me. I'm feeling things, you know, you know, we kiss a little, we hug a little. I'm thinking about taking this to the next level. How can we be safe and and have the safety to have that conversation or have that the safety to weigh the pros and the cons of what that looks like with her and say, you know what? You, you may feel this today, but what if, what if, what would happen if you asked him to wait two weeks? Can you ask him to wait two weeks and see what he does? And let's talk about it in a week. I'm going to make you a doctor's appointment in two weeks for you to go and get on birth control. But in the meanwhile, these are the things that we're going to talk about. And in the meanwhile, can you have him come over and have, a, let's talk to go to dinner. Can you have his parents come and be involved in this conversation? Like there are better ways to do it than forcing 
your child to feel that as if they have no input on the behaviors and the the feelings that they have and the decisions that are being made about them. My mother was a very author, authoritarian, woo, authoritarian parent. Let me look it up. Make sure that I said I used that right. Author, authoritative. I don't think I. S- OK, yeah, because there is authoritarian. Oh, I was right. I didn't learn that in, in grad school. I learned that in undergrad. So I had to see if I remembered it. Oh, yeah, I said it right. An authoritarian, <laughs> an authoritative parent is strict and warm. Authoritarian parent are, is strict and cold. My mother ruled with an iron fist and it was not a lot of warmth in the house. I knew she loved me. She took care of me. She fed me. I never wanted for nothing. But yeah, I wanted a hug and touchy feely. Miss Banks wasn't the one. So my mother was very authoritarian. And because of that, I always felt like there were decisions being made about me around me that didn't involve me. It was never a matter of what I cared about or um, I told this this story recently to uh, Manu Boo about my old boo, which guys don't do that. But we were talking about parenting and so and co-parenting. And so, um, you know, I remember once asking this person if his kids liked going to summer school. And I was like, do they prefer going to summer school or whatever? And he was like, I don't give a damn at what they prefer. I didn't ask them if they prefer to go to summer school. I just care about, you know, they not going to sit up in my face and look at grown folk. And I was like, damn, that's a very, you know, 1984 way of parenting that you don't give a damn if they looking up anything. Now I know if you grew up when I grew up and how I grew up, you, you don't, you come in the house before the street lights get on. You don't run in and out of my house, letting my air out the house. How do you let the air out? I don't know, but you letting the air out the house. You got up and you, you got dressed and you ate breakfast and you went outside and I don't want to see you no more till lunch. And New York city had free lunch. So you going to go and take your behind the free lunch and then you're going to come back in here and I don't want to see you no more till dinner. Right. So I got where he was coming from. But the reason that I had asked him the question was because I just wanted to know about the children's enjoyment. Like if they enjoyed going to summer camp. And so the conversation that he and I had about parenting, I was like, you know, I, my son works really, really hard during the school year. He gets all A's and B's. He's always been on the honor roll. He's always been in talented and gifted classes. And my son has been working since he was nine years old. He was an actor, et cetera. So I was like, in the summertime, I just let him live. For the a large majority of the time that I was raising my son, I was a teacher for a large number of those years. Or freelancing or doing other things that allowed me to work around his schedule. So if he was home during the summer, I was home during the summer. Or if I had to work, he had a place to go, but he didn't have to be in the house. He didn't have to, like, there was no need for me to pay for daycare or need for me to pay for, um, you know, what, when he went to daycare, he went all, all year round. But once he started school, if there was summer session or if he was out for the summer, then he didn't need to go. And then there was one year that I did send him to summer school. And, I mean, not summer school, but day summer camp. And he really didn't like it. And so I was like, okay, well, as long as you read these books in the summertime and you do what I asked you to do when, when I asked you to do with it, you can stay home. And so it was, re- it was really just me asking about the children's enjoyment. And he was like, I don't give a damn if these kids enjoy anything or not. They're just not going to sit home and stay in my face. And I was like, well, I don't know if parenting with you or co-parenting with you would be ideal for me. Because not only are you shutting these kids down, you shut me down. Like, you don't even want to hear what I have, like I was, I wasn't even, I didn't have an opinion one way or the other. I was just understand. I was trying to understand whether or not his kids actually liked something and they could express what they like. Well, the man said he didn't give a damn what they like. And so how do you raise children who feel autonomous in that kind of environment? And this is no shade to him. Like he's a great father, allegedly, but <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? Like, how, like we, we're raising adult, young adults and they have to learn how to be able to explore out into the world with the, the information that we've given them and come back to us when they fail. And if you don't leave the door open for that to happen, if all you're doing is like beating and yelling and screaming and controlling, we, we raise anxious children who don't feel good about themselves, who often have low self-esteem and they are not confident in their decision making ability and it becomes a very scary world for that type of person 
and they make really jacked up decisions as they get older. And so, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. What would you suggest if you were the parent of a 17 year old dating a 27 year old or a 37 year old? I don't remember how old the guy was in the post, but whatever, older than them, at least five years older than them, at least older, older than 21. Like what would, what would the consequences I say be of that decision or, or how would you control the narrative in that I don't know like I, I I was upset by it when I read it I don't think a 37 year old or a 30 year old or whatever how, whatever the age difference was anybody older than four or five years with the 17 year old should be with a 17 year old anybody over 21 I don't feel like you should be with a 17 year old but whatever like that's just me but you you know you do get to a point in parenting where you don't get to make your children's decisions for you but you do want to have the the option of being able to have access to them if they fail and so what would you suggest how would you suggest to make that environment like you can't you can't beat everybody up you 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 can't punish everybody and every like so how do you like what do you do what would you do okay uh if you want to be on the show i'm looking for a sex therapist a, a licensed sex therapist to be on the show i have so much i want to talk about when it comes to sex therapy or sex in general and nobody to talk to so if you are a sex therapist and you want to be on the show just drop us an email at a black therapist podcast and click on the be our guest tab if you are a man therapist a male therapist black male therapist man human <laughs> Uh, and you want to be on the show or a mental health advocate and you are a male I, I have topics that I really want to discuss with you guys I've been asking for the last few weeks that if you are a male therapist or a sex therapist to hit me up because I want you on the show but alas it hasn't happened yet so um like I said shout out to everybody who signed up for our free uh workshop if you want to get on the mailing list and you haven't joined yet you can go on the website and sign up to our mailing list if you haven't yet you can also go on our website black therapist podcast slash shop and or black therapist podcast.com slash shop and you can buy our t-shirts and hoodies and our paraphernalia okay all right and shout out to everybody who's who's been purchasing them i want to see your pictures make sure you you post your pictures on it the web uh, this whole store is 10% off right now if you're on the mailing list. So you can go and get that. And yeah, shoot me an email if there's anything that you want me to cover that I haven't yet covered. And this has been another episode of the Black Therapist Podcast. Okay, be well. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of Black Therapist Podcast. Once again, you can follow us on all our social media sites at Black Therapist Podcast on Instagram and on Twitter, as well as Black in Therapy on Facebook. Facebook, or you can follow your host, me, Miss M S N I K I, thanks on Instagram and Twitter, as well as you can find out any information about me at Nikita, N I K I T A, banks.com, and on the show's website, blacktherapistpodcast.com. And don't forget, if you want to send us any general feedback, show suggestions, uh, show topics, or guest ideas, please feel free to drop us an email at blacktherapistpodcast.com at gmail.com. Thank you. Be well.